Good morning, my name is Josh, Cyclones Oz, and today a very detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about some showers and storms across the Queensland coastline, some heavy rainfall up in far north Queensland. We're also going to be talking about some rainfall across Western Australia, all of that, plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated. But we're going to start things off over in southeastern Queensland. We do have a little bit of rain trickling through the southern parts of the state right now. In fact, 53 millimetres fell in northern uh, New South Wales last night. Uh, just outside of Tamworth and some of the rivers are already flowing and they're moderate flooding alerts up there so certainly some heavy rainfall there but the rainfall a lot lighter in southeastern Queensland a few showers streaming into the Brisbane metro area there going to contract the coastline and into the northern suburbs later on this morning and into early this afternoon before clearing out by the evening hours still though it could be a little bit of a cold and gloomy day across parts of the Brisbane metro and the Sunshine Coast not typical for this time of the year but we will keep you posted on the weather up there it should all clear out by the uh, course of today we're also going to be talking about some showers and storms expected to fire up along a trough line here which you can already start to see firing some cloud between Mount Isa down to Longreach and even down towards where this actual front is located um, over the top of Brisbane right now and that is where we're going to be seeing some showers and thunderstorms develop from tomorrow afternoon and if I play the rainfall forecast through here you can see from tonight into early tomorrow morning we can already start to see an increase in rain activity just outside of Rockhampton, um, Ogmore, um, Gladstone that sort of area you can see it on the central Queensland coastline here and it's all being powered by a trough line like I said running between Mount Isa down towards uh, the Sunshine Coast and the uh, Gold Coast sort of area and this is what's going to be firing up some showers and thunderstorms into Wednesday so tomorrow and especially into tomorrow afternoon you can see them contract to the coastline by tomorrow evening we could be seeing the isolated thunderstorm definitely quite a bit of shower activity expected across this part of central Queensland tomorrow afternoon and if we were to break down rainfall accumulations you can see it here over the next three days which includes tomorrow's rainfall and a little bit into Thursday you can see peak rainfall accumulations are around 30 millimeters especially for locations between Emerald and Rockhampton I do feel like the rainfall is going to be very hit and miss for some of these locations especially um, on the outer edges of where this rainfall is expected. I don't think Mackay is going to pick up any rainfall here, and I feel like Emerald and Rockhampton and the rainfall is going to be pretty hit and miss, but I do feel like Gladstone has a pretty good chance here of getting around 25, maybe 30 millimetres of rainfall. Bundaberg, unfortunately, again, will be a very hit and miss location. A few uh, places down on the Sunshine Coast could get a couple of good drops, but again, very hit and miss rainfall down there. But I do feel like tomorrow, uh, or Wednesday morning, we're going to be looking at up to 50 millimetres falling for, uh, throughout the course of the day, and Thursday morning I do feel like we're going to be waking up to one or two locations picking up that 50 millimeters around this part of central Queensland. Now there isn't really a flooding risk from this weather event here but if we do get a strong thunderstorm that could dump maybe 25 millimeters in an hour and then some showers behind it there is the chance in some of these rivers that they go to minor flooding uh, alerts so we will keep you posted on that but I don't feel like there's going to be a major flooding risk from this weather event here and it's certainly not something to be worrying about that's for sure. Um, in terms of the drought monitoring up here this is always something that I like to talk about when we do have some rainfall for a not a new location but somewhere that we haven't talked about for quite a while you can see soil moisture anomalies are quite low in some parts of the Sunshine Coast especially down towards Brisbane and the Gold Coast but they are still relatively high in this part of central Queensland uh, they did have a relatively wet wet season definitely a wet end to it and some good rainfall is uh, expected to come through throughout the course of today and into tomorrow so I do feel like we're going to be looking at the uh, chance of some river levels going up towards the or close to the flooding alerts here and I would be surprised if the Bureau of Meteorology did issue a flood watch for this part of central Queensland because showers and thunderstorms always bring the risk of that rainfall that comes through. Um, however, like I said, really not is it something worth talking about. Just the heads up that we do have some showers and storm activity, more typical of a September or October weather event than it is for early August coming through tomorrow. You can also see another elephant in the room up in far north Queensland that is very wet soil moistures up there. You can see anomalies are about 20 to 30 uh, millimetres above the average. That's about 200 percent higher than normal for this time of the year and that is because they've got some rainfall coming through on top of the rainfall that they've already had over the past couple of days which we will dive into right now. Now you can see on the radar and the satellite imagery there isn't any rain or cloud activity really streaming into far north Queensland this time. The rainfall has subsided at least for a couple of days. In fact we have seen accumulations up to 200 millimetres over the past week. Most notably at South Mission Beach they've picked up some very good rainfall over the past uh, week and a half or so. Um, however most other locations especially the big metro areas of Cairns and Townsville, they have missed out on significant rainfall, unfortunately. However, there is a little bit of rainfall coming through towards the end 
of this week and into the early parts of next week. Now, I'm not even going to bother to talk about the weather up there for the next couple of days. There will be a few showers for some coastal areas and some more mountainous areas starting from Thursday night into Friday. The showers continuing through Friday and then really picking up this weekend. You can see some light to moderate falls now pretty consistent from about Saturday morning onwards. The rainfall picks up in intensity on Saturday night into Sunday morning before temporarily easing off again on Sunday. Uh, but still, the risk of showers and storms across the central Queensland and the far north Queensland coast does remain. We'll touch on that in just a second. But in terms of weather for far north Queensland, you can see there is going to be some pretty steady uh, light to moderate rainfall that's going to be pretty consistent through Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And even in towards Monday and Tuesday next week, we're looking at a little bit of rainfall up here. And just considering we're looking at light to moderate rainfall, like I always say, 10 to 15, 20 to 25 millimetres a day for a week straight, those rainfall accumulations really do add up. And you can see it here on the precipitation map for the next 10 days. Some very good rainfall accumulations across far north Queensland outside of Innisfail. I believe the mountains Bartles, it's Bartles something. I, I've forgotten the name for the last five months, so I do apologise for that. Correct me in the comments. You can see accumulations up towards 175 millimetres from one of Australia's wettest locations over the next 10 days, and that's just what 20 millimetres a day for a week straight can do. Now, the 20 millimetres a day, like we know in far north Queensland, it's not enough to even turn ahead. That stuff can fall in five minutes from a rain shower. However, when you're talking about 200 millimetres in a week on top of 200 millimetres that has already fallen and then the week after when you're talking about more rainfall coming through, it starts to paint a pretty wet picture up in far north Queensland. We're certainly going to be talking about towards the end of this week. Uh, any significant rainfall, especially accumulations greater than 50 millimetres in a 24 hour period, which they always are possible up in far north Queensland, they do present the risk of some flooding. So for those in uh, flood prone areas in far north Queensland, I mean, you're on edge quite a lot of the year, especially through the wet season, but I do recommend you just pay close attention to the radar and the weather forecast over the coming couple of days because this does look like uh, a chance where you do see rivers go up towards the minor flooding alerts and rainfall accumulations blowing out to 50, maybe even 80 millimetres on one or two days, especially for locations around Innisfail and Tully. The weather can be so unpredictable around there and it is often very, at times, very hard to put a number on how much rainfall is expected. It's not just expected exclusive to the Cassowary Coast as well. You can see up in the Daintree there looking at a solid 100 millimetres as well. Cairns, however, are going to be missing out on the majority of the rainfall, only a couple of millimetres there, maybe 10 to 15. And the Townsville Rain Dome also in full effect here. Just a couple of drops expected around Townsville. There could be a few greater drops on the mountains adjacent to Townsville, up towards 20 millimetres there. But it looks like Townsville, Air and Bowen are going to miss out on rainfall greater than 10 millimetres, unfortunately. And this leads us very nicely onto the next part of the video is the central Queensland rainfall outlook for the sort of five to 10 day forecast period. We do have quite a lot of rainfall coming through and I have just spoiled exactly how much rainfall is coming through in the next 10 days, but I'm going to break it down for you right now. So starting from this week, Weekend, this onshore flow is going to start piping up and bringing some showers ashore from the Queensland New South Wales border right up towards the Cape York Peninsula. It's going to be pretty consistent across a lot of the Queensland coastline. It will really pipe up on Sunday afternoon into Monday morning. You can see showers and storms for locations between uh, sort of the Whit Sundays down towards the Sunshine Coast. And it's only light to moderate rainfall, but it is going to be relatively unpleasant weather to start off next week. you just got that low cloud streaming through with those gusty winds up to 30 knots and just the light to moderate showers that turn to drizzle at times. It's not going to be very pleasant weather, especially for those in the wit Sundays. It could be the occasional thunderstorm as well here and there, especially Monday and Tuesday, before we see this tropical low-like system develop in the Coral Sea. Now, when I say tropical low, you're instantly going to think cyclone. Certainly not. I'm not calling for a cyclone whatsoever. Not even a tropical low-like system. But this tropical low-like uh, system here is going to be moving into the Coral Sea and driving in quite a lot of rainfall ashore just because of how it's rotating over in the Solomon Sea uh, sort of area. And you can see the onshore flows just going to be piping up those showers through the middle parts of next week, even into the later parts of next week. They should, however, ease off by around Thursday or Friday by the looks of things. But we're talking really long range in the uh, forecast at that point. And like I just said, Queensland is notoriously hard to forecast in terms of rainfall beyond sort of the seven day forecast period. Um, in terms of peak rainfall accumulations, I think the wettest day will be Sunday night into Monday afternoon. I think the rainfall will ease off from there, but we still could be seeing some steady showers and the odd thunderstorm through Tuesday, but it should mostly clear out by around Wednesday afternoon. Thursday looking a bit dry for a lot of the Queensland coastline, but still a few showers lingering there. The Axis G3, however, has a completely different forecast solution in mind. Take a look at this here. You can see the rainfall a lot closer to the Queensland coastline. In fact, a bit of a hokey pokey low pressure system 
just offshore uh, from the Queensland coastline. That drives ashore a vast quantity of rainfall between sort of the White Bay area right down towards uh, the Sunshine Coast and you can see some pretty significant rainfall is expected to accumulate here especially from Sunday afternoon through Monday and Tuesday. Thankfully the worst of it isn't actually over the shore because that rainfall there would cause some significant flooding for locations between Rockhampton down towards uh, I guess um, Harvey Bay or even deeper into the Sunshine Coast some good accumulations making it as far south as Brisbane but yeah if this was to materialize this solution here we'd certainly be talking about a rainfall event for this part of Queensland certainly a very wet week and some some significant flooding would be possible and you can see it here on the rainfall accumulation map this is the access g3 by the way this isn't the reliable ECM but you can see peak accumulations up to 250 even 300 millimeters just offshore here and peak accumulations around Gladstone uh, down towards Bundaberg approaching 130 to 140 millimeters over land so certainly some decent rainfall expected there or possible there now like I said this is a forecast run it's the access g3 they can funnel out some pretty crazy forecasts at time at times and I do much rather the reliability of the Eastern Relief, which is still calling for a pretty significant amount of rainfall, up to 100 millimetres along the Sunshine Coast, about 40 for Gladstone, about 40 as well for Bundaberg, 35 or so for Rockhampton, but quite a bit of that could fall in the thunderstorms that we're going to be seeing over the coming couple of days, and about 50 for Mackay from this weather event. So still some good rainfall is expected across the central Queensland coastline, but again, Take this forecast with a very heavy pinch of salt. It's still a week away, and I'll be giving you frequent updates on it in, in, as the forecast time does draw closer. If you've got any questions or comments about the Queensland weather, please do leave them in the comments section down below. I look forward to getting through as many as I can today. Uh, but yeah, that's basically doing it for the Queensland forecast this time. Like I said, anything unanswered, please do let me know in the comments section down below. And the reason why I'm neglecting everywhere across the southern states bar Western Australia is there's just nothing going on. There are a few showers and storms expected across New South Wales and Victoria in the five to 10 day forecast period. But when we're talking about thunderstorms, we don't know until just a couple of days or even on the day that they are happening. So again, I'm not gonna to touch on those until probably a, later this week or even into this weekend. It's gonna be Western Australia for the coming couple of days. We do have a cold front that's approaching the West Australian coastline right now. And you can see it here on the uh, rain forecast map from uh, Windy. You can see it is going to carry some showers and storms. And in fact, some heavy rainfall is possible across the Southwest Capes before lunchtime today. It will pick up after lunchtime into the early hours of the uh, this evening. You can see the showers and storms extending up towards Bunbury and Bustleton by around 2 or 3 p.m. We could be, like I said yesterday, looking at some heavy accumulations up towards 30 or 40 millimeters through here and isolated pockets up towards 50 or 60. The slow moving nature of this cold front and just how um, heavy some of the rainfall could be in these embedded storms uh, could certainly blow out some rainfall accumulations, especially for locations around Vass or Margaret River. Some good rainfall is possible there and I would not be surprised if Bustleton did end up with 50 millimetres in the gauge by early tomorrow morning. We're also talking about some rainfall extending up towards the Perth metro area later tonight. It shouldn't be too heavy still, though. A couple of showers expected uh, from about 6 p.m. tonight. The real rainfall will start from about 8 or 9 p.m. And there could be some showers or storms, especially across the southern and the western suburbs uh, into the early hours of tomorrow morning. The heaviest rainfall will be concentrated across the hills in the eastern suburbs. The northern suburbs as well could get some heavy falls as well, especially early tomorrow morning at around 5 or 6 a.m. And I do feel like the bulk of the rainfall is going to impact the northern suburbs which have missed out on the last couple of cold fronts. So it will even itself out quite nicely uh, in terms of rainfall for the Perth metro area. The northern suburbs staring at up to 50 millimetres before 9am tomorrow. The rainfall should clear out by around 9am tomorrow. Still some showers expected across the uh, southwest. Some storms also possible across the southwest coast between Albany and Esperance. We could be talking about some showers and storms there. And the rainfall continuing for the Perth metro area until around 5 or 6pm, clearing out for the evening commute and then moving deeper into the wheat belt. And even into the gas coin and the gold fields as well, we could be seeing a few good falls out there, up towards 5 or 10 millimetres of some of the locations out into the uh, Murchison especially. We could be talking about a, a few good drops of rainfall between 10 and 15 millimetres. But again, rainfall pretty hit and miss from this cold front once you get out of the immediate areas of the coastline by the looks of things. The rainfall does die off a little bit. You can see a return to the cool, calm conditions powered by these high-pressure systems through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then it's going to be into next weekend when we see our next cold front coming through early Sunday morning. It doesn't look too strong, but still a good rain band here could drop another 20 millimetres for the Perth metro area. You could be seeing that come through before 9am on Sunday. Uh, and some good falls expected as far up the coast as sort of 
Uh, Geraldton, by the looks of things, and embedded showers and storms in this one as well could dump some decent falls for one or two locations. We'll keep on uh, keep a very close eye on this cold front here. Things have been changing, and to be honest, things have been downtrending in terms of the intensity for this cold front. So we'll keep you posted after this current cold front comes through in the Perth metro area, uh, and that will be front and centre in tomorrow's forecast update for Western Australia. Uh, but you can see the rainfall really doesn't get too high after that for the uh, southwest corner of Western Australia. A few showers expected in the early parts of next week, but apart from that, it looks like it might be a return to very stable, uh, high pressure sort of uh, systems that are going to be dominating the West Australian coastline, at least for the coming couple of days into the later parts of next week and into early next fortnight and towards the middle and the later parts of uh, August, we could be talking about a little bit of stability in the weather forecast, which is fantastic because we've just been peppered by cold fronts so far this year. But the rainfall has been good and it has been very welcome. Now, in terms of peak accumulations over the coming 24 hours from this cold front into early tomorrow morning. We're talking about up to 50 millimetres for the hills. Perth metro area expecting around 30 millimetres or so. The northern suburbs expecting up towards 40, potentially 50 millimetres as well. Some decent rainfall expected out into the wheat belt, but it's really only going to be the western extremities of the wheat belt. Uh, the rainfall kind of stops once it gets out towards Jinjin to align to northern and York. Uh, some decent rainfall as well along the southwest capes, up to 40 or 50 millimetres of the stuff as well. But apart from that, it looks like the remainder of the state does miss out. In terms of 10-day accumulations, which would include the rainfall coming through on Sunday, you can see a bit of a jump here, a further 20 to 30 millimetres expected across the southwest, and it does penetrate a little bit further inland and a little bit further north as well, up towards Durian Bay, or even as far north as Geraldton by the looks of things. But again, rainfall looking a little bit drier than what it has been for the last couple of weeks across the southwestern corner of Western Australia. Now, like I said, I will keep you posted on the weather systems that are coming through. I don't like to be uh, making some big predictions for uh, fronts that are seven or eight days away. Again, I haven't been too reliable on those this year, and that's just because of forecast model uncertainty. It's really nothing that I could control. Uh, so I'm trying to refrain from making potentially dodgy forecasts for you guys. But anyways, that is all that I have time for this morning. If you did enjoy the video, then please do consider leaving a like, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're nearing in on 17,000 subscribers, and your support lately has been greatly appreciated. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and like I've said, every video. I could not run this show without them. So again, their support is greatly appreciated. But that is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.